I welcome all the participants uh, who have joined this uh, webinar. Uh, I welcome President uh, Raga Raga of ICID. He has uh, taken time from his busy schedule to join us. I extend welcome to Pawan Kumar Reddy and uh, Engineer uh, ML Jack, who, who, who are speaking today uh, for this uh, webinar on conservation agriculture and in the context of rice wheat cropping system. I extend welcome to Mr. Engineer Aswin Pandya, Secretary General ICID. And now, uh, Mr. Sankhua, Aran Sankhua is uh, joining. Uh, we, he was having some uh, technical problem. So now he'll be joining. He will be another uh, speaker and resource Thank person. You. Now I request uh, uh, Engineer Pandya, Secretary General ICID, to give his uh, opening remarks. Mr. Pandya. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Varma. Uh, it's it's a, indeed a matter of great uh, pleasure for us to have a leading company like ITC in the field of uh, agriculture uh, with us today and, and sharing their experiences uh, on the conservation agriculture in context of right wheat cropping system. Uh, of late in India, especially in the parts of the northern India, this uh, this right wheat uh, rice wheat cycle. And the and the agricultural calendars have thrown up certain uh, issues, especially from the point of view of uh, pollution and land management and and various uh, other uh, associated uh, problems. Uh, so it has become very important for us to really uh, work out that whereas uh, this right wheat cropping system has uh, provided us with the benefits of green uh, revolution and it has uh, made us uh, food sufficient. Uh, rather surplus. We also need to really look at how we manage this cycle so that we do not create the unwanted uh, side effects. So from that angle, this is a this is a very uh, useful webinar that uh, that we will be having, and uh, we have got very imminent uh, speakers with us. Uh, we are having our president, uh, Dr. Ragab Ragab. Uh, who will be able to give a very brief uh, view of the situation in in uk and then we have uh, engineer pavan kumar golapalli uh, he is a he was he is a young professional of uh, icid and he is currently program executive in uh, itc limited he did very good work uh, in 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 the area of uh, irrigation management Earlier, he had developed a few applications with which the entire network management uh, can be done in a in a systematic way using the uh, commonly available mobile and GPS uh, technologies. Uh, so he has uh, he has a very good uh, background of, of of irrigation and water use efficiency management. Uh, we have another uh, speaker with us who is uh, Dr. R. N. Sankua. Uh, he is from India, and uh, he is a person who has worked a lot in the remote sensing applications in in water resources area uh, he even did his phd also on on the same uh, same subject and he has an exp extensive experience uh, in the area of uh, developing the remote sensing applications uh, especially manage monitoring and uh, managing the projects using the remote sensing uh, uh, images and uh, and he also is a is a very uh, a very uh, very eminent person as far as the system management is concerned he worked a lot in in the indo australia joint program in which the reservoir operation and iwrm rm studies and he has also authored four books on various uh, aspects of gis and uh, and and their applications and he has got number of awards as a as a part of his uh, his work and he has got a very good uh, uh, handle Hello. over the spatial modeling and geoinformatics. Uh, then we have. Uh, uh, he's also joining, sir. Actually, he is in uh, management committee meeting. So, uh, afternoon they called for one meeting. So, he will be joining by 5 o'clock. Okay. And yeah, yeah. Uh, then, uh, then we have uh, Dr. ML Jat. Uh, he is a principal scientist and systems agronomist. Uh, sustainable intensification strategy leader for Asia and North Africa in the uh, in the CIMMYT, that is the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center. 
He is a PhD in agronomy from ICAR, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, and he has got a 23 years of experience of impactful research in the leading institution of India, that is the ICAR. And he has worked and served and visited about 45 countries across Asia, Africa, and Americas, and worked with the FAO mission and has managed uh, 20 large multi-state multidisciplinary research projects programs uh, worth almost 100 crores and he has got a uh, very high impact uh, 200 and more papers and research outputs uh, which are there and having having got a number of awards uh, he is a he is a veritable uh, knowledge bank uh, in which he, he has provided extremely useful inputs all across the sector uh, and then uh, we will be having uh, Mr. Akhilesh uh, Yadav, uh, Regional Manager, uh, North ITC Limited, and he is a seasoned development professional, having more than 18 years of experience in corporate social responsibility, and he is currently leading the social investment program of ITC in northwestern states, where this area, where these issues of the rice wheat uh, cycle and conservation agriculture are becoming uh, more and more important, and he is also worked with the various uh, institutes like Institute of Forest Management and uh, also in the uh, botany from the uh, University of Calcutta. And he has a lot of experience in the in the areas of climate change, agriculture, agri-extension, technology, public health, etc. Uh, so at the outset, uh, since our president has got certain time constraints, so I will I will first invite him to uh, provide his uh, his view views of wisdom and uh, and his brief presentation and then we will we'll commence with the uh, with the rest of the webinar so i would request uh, dr ragap to please uh, take up his presentation first uh, thank you secretary general and uh, thank you uh, engineer varma also for uh, inviting me i would like to share here uh, Show my screen. Uh, is that is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the conservative agriculture, actually, here in the Europe in general started after the, the second world war when farmers they had no time to go to plow the fields and to to uh, to, to, to seed uh, so what they did during the war is to put the seeds quickly before the next bombing and to run away and to leave it and watch a crop growing and that actually led them to to see some benefits from uh, that sort of conservative agriculture without plowing, just leaving the crop residues on, on the surface. And they, they could see some benefits. And it started from there onwards that the conservative, conservative agriculture, because farmers they could see benefit from that. And they started to gain uh, interest over the years. And now we have dedicated, actually, areas where uh, conservative agriculture is taking place in Europe. Uh, some people, they call it uh, organic agriculture. And, and some they call it conservative agriculture. And the benefits they found was that it, 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 it reduced the soil evaporation losses and increased the water availability. It increased organic matter, it reduced soil erosion and increased nutrient availability, reduced agrochemical use and, and also labor and the machinery and improved uh, wild wildlife. And some farmers as well, they could see the change in the soil structure by having the, the soil biota quite active as swarms, and improving the, the infiltration rate and also water retention. And in a nearby uh, uh, the organic farm here near Oxfordshire, uh, we tried actually to understand uh, the impact on runoff and also we started to, to see some other things while we were observing our hydrological uh, measurements. And we, we could see actually in, in, in that organic farm, it's called sheep drove. You have the, the, the link to 
the, the site uh, underneath sheepdrove.com and we could see that farm in particular using something new it's called agro environment wildlife strips at the edge of the field and this is to enhance pollination and, and also to enhance yield so they can get better yield and also they encourage the, the wildlife and the coexistence uh, in, uh, of the animals and, and the plants together with the crops. Um, so the, this also has been moving on to something else. Farmers have started now to use mixed cropping uh, together in the same strip uh, or in the same field. And also they could see uh, the benefit of having a companion uh, crops. Um, so that's really all what I wanted to uh, to say here as experience from the uh, the uh, conservative agriculture and uh, minimum tillage and conservative tillage and how the we started to see some benefits from this conservative agriculture. Uh, so I would really learn more from you about the experience in in uh, in, in, uh, in India, and uh, of course will be different. But uh, I'm sure we will be uh, looking at water saving, energy saving, uh, better income, and, and of course, um, adapting to the climate change uh, and increasing the food security. So I'm really uh, listening uh, today to learn from all of you. And I thank you really for making, uh, make it uh, possible and available for uh, professionals around the world to listen to your experience and to gain and to learn. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Raghav. And uh, you have given us a very, very good background of the conservation agriculture and how, how it has started. And uh, in fact, here in, in our case, uh, we will have to basically orient the people to go towards conservation agriculture. Uh, because of the problems of uh, air air pollution due to burning of the residue etc issues are concerned so so that this will be a good uh, valuable experience and uh, now i will uh, request pavan uh, uh, kumar reddy to take up the floor and, uh, and and make his presentation thank you sir so very good afternoon all so myself pavan kumar reddy so as I said, so uh, so uh, as uh, starting of the webinar, so uh, Ashwin sir also said that so in India, especially in Indo Gangtok plain, so the crop burning is a major issue. So then, how to uh, crop these uh, issues? So we uh, so the conservation agriculture practices uh, year old practice. So but in a rice wheat cropping pattern, so how we can do so? How it uh, it will be a win win situation in terms of environment and the farmer. So uh, ITC uh, we um, provides some sort of solutions uh, in where we are working. So coming to say as uh, ITC's background, so ITC it's a uh, century old company, so which is uh, believe in uh, societal value. So creating social impact can create uh, good businesses also. So and uh, which is an uh, sustainable day exemplar. So where uh, Sorry. So is my screen visible? Yeah, it is visible. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very clear. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so so it's exemplary in sustainability so since uh, so it's uh, uh, the only one one company in the world so which is carbon positive water positive and solid waste re uh, recycle positive so in a row so 13 16 and 11 consecutive years uh, and so which is impacting 6 million livelihoods at rural india so through its businesses uh, creating uh, livelihoods uh, so coming to uh, the uh, social investment book so idc is having its uh, social investment region as a corporate social responsibility so we uh, we call it as a mission synergical so it's basically the golden future uh, so uh, in uh, msk we work in a two horizon approach so in horizon one we work on uh, 
creating sustainable livelihoods, uh, especially on natural resource management. So as we can see, this is Pan India. So the uh, social forest, farm forest, we created around 7 lakh uh, acres and uh, created uh, around 42 million kiloliters of water storage potential, so which can be and uh, enhancing groundwater storage and uh, providing life-saving irrigation during uh, non-season and uh, creating sustainable agriculture area for around 8 lakh uh, acres. So, which is an, uh, crops ranging from paddy, wheat, banana, sugarcane, coconut. So, so uh, from uh, northern India to southern India, so where its factory catchments and where its uh, agri catchments are there and uh, providing uh, Women empowerment uh, through livelihood uh, opportunities to creating uh, self help groups and coming to uh, Horizon 2. So, where uh, ITC believes in uh, so creating capabilities for tomorrow, so by creating enhancing the uh, children's education through primary education and skilling the local unemployed youth uh, through vocational trainings. Uh, so, and uh, providing sanitation and creating uh, solid waste management programs in individual household source segregation. So this is uh, uh, MSK's uh, vision in creating uh, societal value. And so coming to today's webinar, so we'll be talking about, so what's the background of this conservation agriculture and problem statement and project area uh, and approach what ITC follows uh, in this conservation agriculture and what's the program impact and uh, what's the current year's outcomes. So coming to background, so in Indo uh, gang plane, so, uh, so we were especially working on this Punjab case. So Punjab is basically in one province in, uh, in a, uh, Indian country. So we were working on districts called uh, Kapurthala. So he, uh, where about 84% of uh, area uh, comes under this uh, paddy wheat uh, cropping system. So around this that the district produces 3.5 lakh ton per year paddy straw so and uh, which is harvested by uh, common harvested so, uh, so there is a uh, huge gap when uh, uh, creating the window period between paddy harvesting wheat swings so there is an uh, shorter window period so uh, which is around 20 to 25 days so which is very less time period to manage the straw so due to this uh, it uh, farmer feel uh, he may not manage that huge straw at uh, shorter period and the straw may not be useful for uh, uh, livestock purposes due to its high silica content uh, and uh, the straw is more excessive uh, than it produces and uh, so and the perception so lack of profitable alternative solutions to the farmer so the farmer thinks that so uh, recid, uh, burning of this residue is an um, uh, major one option so he finds it so if you can see this Kapu, uh, this Kapurthala district is uh, majorly uh, divided in uh, five uh, developmental blocks, which is around having 688 villages, so around uh, 85,000 hectares. So as I said, so the reasons for burning. So one more thing is the uh, uh, machine linkage and machine utilization. So machine utilization, so under that shorter window period, so all farmers may be having the requirements, but on time requirement and uh, the getting uh, on time uh, harvesting and on time sowing is the major important in uh, rubbing this uh, crop residue burning issue. And uh, so that major reason, one more thing, see if farmer uh, also using this uh, in-situ management practices also, there may be an uh, option uh, due to this heavy clay soils. So, so the temporary water logging issue created due to this mulch over layer, uh, the, the disease infestation is also very high. So then uh, to crop this, we uh, provided some sort of solutions we can discuss it in later. So the project area, if you can see the developmental box to uh, create an contiguous area. So uh, let me show you in present. So, uh, so basically the project started in 2018. So with uh, 46 uh, villages as a pilot scale. So how we can work it out. So basically we are having our factory uh, uh, located in this uh, district. So uh, at a pilot scale, uh, so we were working on uh, that uh, harvesting and wheat sowing phase. Only. So then uh, with that uh, experimentation, so we thought okay, so we can uh, extend it up to uh, some of the villages in uh, all the blocks. So post uh, implementation in 253 blocks. So 
what we found is that so there is a lacuna that so where we can engage with farmer more from tidy sowing to wheat harvesting so may help uh, better understanding of farmer problem and uh, to provide a sustainable solution so in that way if we can think so we come up with a uh, round their engagement approach in uh, 2020 then later on so with that approach we uh, gain uh, good efforts and we uh, that results yielded very good in that sense so the project scale amplification has been happened this year especially in 467 villages uh, so with target an area of around uh, 183000 acres of id area are uh, shown in these areas so basically this uh, the district divided into two parts so it previously it's on principal state so that's why it's uh, two parts are divided so the sustainable approach which we follow is we need to create an uh, collaborative model so which can be a community driven and uh, which is a sustainable crop residue management uh, uh, techniques which can be uh, achieving the zero stubble burning uh, in the uh, high debit uh, cropping pattern so uh, with uh, with all this so uh, what will be the benefit to the farmer so in farmer point of view so there will be an three major uh, things so uh, one is productivity second one is the cost of cultivation uh, uh, third one is the uh, um, mitigation to the climate risk so if these three things can be addressed so farmer can able to uh, listen to anyone so to address this we come up with so uh, awareness and adoption so awareness on uh, different types of practices and adoption needs to be happened so how it, this can be measured by the productivity of the crop and second one is economic viability so the uh, methods which, uh, which can be adaptable by the farmer so that it should be uh, an uh, reduction in the cost of cultivation so it can be measured in that sense and third one is the sustainability so uh, the sustaining of different types of practices can only be uh, uh, adaptable so when the uh, issue uh, resolved so that non-burning and increase in organic carbon and the soil so as uh, compared to all other states so punjab state is using very uh, huge, um, very quantum of fertilizers uh, to the soil so to get the greater yields of that crop so but the soil health is deteriorating day and day and the uh, organic carbon of that soil is also uh, very less so compared to other states due to higher fertilizer consumption so the year the round engagement uh, so we uh, divide it in a three phases one is paddy phase second one is uh, crop residue management phase and third one is the uh, wheat phase so uh, we try to plot it out so uh, how uh, efforts and this timeline can be matched so efforts in the sense how our resources human resource and frequency of their interaction with farmers uh, can happen so we try to plot it out uh, what village level so we try to showcase here the, so uh, how uh, tidy uh, sowing um, pre-sowing me methods how they can interact with farmers then during sowing how uh, their interaction uh, period with the farmers happen and package of practices uh, promotion and, and during that so what we found that case so during c especially shear and phase so crop residue management phase uh, there are higher human efforts are required to uh, greater uh, generating the greater awareness uh, material and uh, doing greater uh, harvesting coordination so with this uh, we found that so the uh, machine availability is there on one part and uh, second part is the machine utilization so these two parts how it can be uh, fixed out so uh, we uh, uh, do this stakeholder engagements so we believe in uh, partnership so we value partnership so uh, where different stakeholders has been mapped so farmers what farmer needs to be uh, do at his field so he should uh, harvest the id crop with uh, superstar management system which is uh, mounted on a uh, combine harvester and uh, he should uh, show his wheat through happy seeder also uh, super seeder so which we can call it as a minimum tillage or zero tillage and uh, local combine harvesters so where uh, this uh, harvester so we can train them so how to uh, harvest uh, on time and how to coordinate with farmers how to linkage and cooperative success to tap this uh, society's strength to outreach the farmers and uh, to train uh, farmer uh, farmer friends and krishvignan kendras so uh, which is the um, uh, 
massive extension mechanisms in the uh, India, so uh, provided by uh, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. So where they provide a capacity building uh, and other knowledge related uh, programs to the farmers. So uh, how uh, engaging with them and on time and agriculture department and agriculture university. So where uh, agriculture department is working at a scalable level. So where if we can engage with them, so this can be an uh, amplified to other uh, districts. So that will be uh, why agriculture university means we need to have uh, a database documentation. So how it uh, needs to be done and uh, how it needs to be scaled. So there should be a proper uh, database evidence backup. And third one is machine manufacturers. So where we can, so they can provide technical guidance to the um, uh, machine owners or uh, farmers. So on uh, how to uh, do operation maintenance of those uh, machines. So every year, so uh, we uh, we need, uh, so we were organizing this stakeholder workshop to disseminate uh, what are all the results and what are all the different uh, management uh, options provided and what are all the Farmer friends provide their feedback on different types of methodologies. So to, with all these, uh, so there is an one uh, 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 thing is that case. So we uh, every uh, stakeholder needs to uh, get their role clarity. So to uh, where we are trying to bring uh, their role clarity with finer counter of engagement uh, all stakeholders and. So as I said, so uh, all this needs to be done in a proper way. So how it needs to be done. So it should be an uh, easily understandable by the farmer. So we uh, standardize all the package of practices and say you know, for paddy and wheat crops. So here I am showing for uh, wheat. Uh, here I'm showing for only uh, paddy crop and uh, especially uh, wheat sowing. So seed smart if you can see. Uh, so short duration variety. If short duration variety is there. So the uh, lesser uh, growing period will be there. So higher the window period uh, will be uh, getting by the farmer to manage his crop. So like this way, so uh, water smart if you can say direct seeded dress. So in direct seeded dress, uh, there uh, he may get uh, uh, on time machinery available with lesser uh, cost of cultivation. So like this, so energy smart, so different types of machinery, so which can be uh, uh, useful for the farmer to cut down different tillage operations so in knowledge smart how needs to be uh, transferred those technology transfer how it can be do on weather smart uh, so weather related so suppose if a uh, farmer is going for a direct seed he should he should know about the so when is monsoon arriving so next shower when it is coming so it is all this information needs to uh, transfer to the farmer so if I can showcase you one video, so how this uh, I'm saying uh, superstar management system. So how it is attached and how it is working. If we can see it is chopping the uh, stand, so it's spreading over the uh, field. So if you can see, so this is then happy cedar. So you saw that that's on the standing stubble itself, the happy cedar uh, immediately sown itself. So means uh, the this stubble acts as a mulch to that uh, wheat crop. So the super seed also same type of technology. So but the standing stubble it's incorporated into the soil. So uh, these two technologies, so which we are promoting at a higher scale. So there are other methodologies also there, so we can discuss it in coming slides. So then uh, coming to communications, how it needs to be communicated to the farmer. So the information and communication uh, tools, uh, which design in such a way uh, that so uh, at mass scale level, targeted scale level, individual scale level. So it needs to be reach out to the different people at a different scale. So. Uh, at mass scale level, so our plan is this means mobile van. So mobile van, so where uh, audio jingles will be there so during 
the uh, harvesting times it can be uh, go around the villages and where uh, farmer unions are there so they can speak about uh, uh, these things and uh, wall painting so where uh, this type of wall painting so with different types of smart indicators has been written so where uh, which practices can be followed uh, it has been uh, um, written on the walls and gurudwara announcements so Punjab itself uh, majorly uh, Sikh based community so where gurudwara is the uh, major um, uh, uh, traditional uh, their uh, belief so if we can uh, approach this religious leaders to talking on uh, this type of uh, CR crop residue management technologies on conservation agriculture so people can uh, listen to their words so some of the people so this is an uh, uh, try for them so on the targeted scale so where uh, we develop uh, flip charts and uh, flip charts where uh, farmer field school farmer can be trained uh, and whatsapp based uh, uh, one pager uh, notes can be shared on time so like when uh, disease uh, outbreak is there uh, when to uh, if uh, weather alerts so these types can be shared with the farmers and uh, sometimes so online interactions so during covid time so so we uh, no farmer is having interaction with the scientist or uh, any agriculture department people so to interact with them so online modules has been uh, taken up under to interact with. so uh, uh, along with this so physical visits also made to the krishna uh, kendra and local uh, agriculture universities and coming to individual scale so demo plot so where uh, the way it should be uh, the practices needs to be uh, followed at 100 percent level so where other village farmers can be trained and uh, so the pamphlets so the if you can see here so the road and management practice how it needs to be done so crm all the practices so these pamphlets were given to the farmers and explained uh, how it needs to be used so during uh, tidy sowing and uh, weed sowing time, so we used to register farmers. So why to register farmer means he he used to get one pager pamphlets uh, uh, where he can uh, readily available in a simplistic manner. So uh, for seed treatment, how much amount of um, uh, seed treatment solution needs to be there? How, how much hours he needs to be kept it, and what type of uh, methodology needs he needs to be followed for that following uh, crop? So this type of uh, communication materials or on time it uh, 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 devices to the field staff and uh, communicated to the farmers. And coming to uh, so uh, all the project plans has been aligned to the uh, local provincial government. So where uh, mobile vans can be uh, uh, flagged off and district administration also uh, uh, embedded in that one. And individual farmer awareness so where. Uh, one village resource person is explaining to farmers so what's the use of this uh, happy seeder and super seeder technology and uh, so to uh, create uh, greater awareness at uh, from childhood level so we reach out to the children uh, so uh, through awareness rallies and uh, paintings so where uh, children are the best extension managers so where uh, rather than learning how we can do uh, how we can manage the straw so this is one of the school in that uh, Kapurthala district so i'm coming to so as as a gas professional so means we feel uh, I, uh key so there is an lacuna in linkaging that uh, uh, existing machinery with the farmers so to uh, create an established system to uh, to coordinate it existing human resource and equipment to the farmers a, a simplistic tool has been designed so which is an google earth based uh, kml file so which can be shared among the lead farmers and uh, village resource person so uh, if you can see video here uh so uh, basically different clusters has been divided uh, designed and uh, cluster wise it has been plotted or uh, available machineries so if anyone we are to click on one particular uh, data points he used to get this is combine harvester so he used to copy that phone number and he used to uh, give it to the farmer so like this way it has been uh, designed and uh, coming to the prioritization of this uh, technologies uh, uh, where so uh, we divided uh, 17 different types of uh, techniques has been uh, among institute management and exit management so as i said so in uh, happy seeder along with rotavator reaper and mulcher has been uh, used and super seeder and uh, happy seeder so the uh, 
yielding benefits also uh, somehow a little bit uh, comparable so compared to other methods and uh, compared to uh, burning uh, uh, no management burning methods so, so the yield is high but the uh, quality of the soil is deteriorating uh, day on day and he needs to apply the um, uh, higher fertilizer uh, doses uh, for that uh, soils especially and one more option which uh, provides ex situ management so but it is not at a large scale level so due to uh, the uh, demand of this uh, ex situ at industrial level is uh, very much less so but we are promoting so wherever uh, power generation mills and sugarcane mills are there so link is in, uh, uh, farmers with uh, uh, baler owners to uh, get out of those straw from this especially heavy clay soil bales as i said so where heavy clay soil bales are there uh, their water lagging issue arises if uh, the uh, paddy straw um, uh, acts as a mulch so if you can so we divided uh, this uh, super straw management system how uh, post that how weed sowing needs to be happened so there are 17 different types of technologies has been uh, categorically uh, designed here and uh, so uh, if i may ask uh, madhu sir uh, to uh, provide a speaking rights to my colleague uh, mr asgar ali so asgar we, ali okay we'll, let me let yeah please continue i will find out i will take a few seconds sir. yeah so uh, so if i can say a background of this photographs if we can see so this is the uh, dried stubble so which is uh, dried standing stubble which is an uh, paddy one so and happy cedar uh, post sowing is if we can see that uh, wheat sowing uh, wheat sowing has been happened in between so uh, how many it is hyder ali hyder ali yeah. no it's asgar ali asgar Uh, so you, if we can see here uh, so the standing stubble sometimes a farmer may get uh, irritation in that sense uh, the it should not be uh, visible to me so due to this maybe my wheat crop failure maybe so it takes uh, time to germinate uh, this wheat crop so during this uh, november december time so uh, super seeder uh, as a better other option where uh, standing stubble may not be visible to the farmer so he may uh, um, Mentally, he may feel happy. Ki, so means a uh, wheat crop can grow easily. Uh, uh, Madhu sir, uh, he, he has been. I, I think please ask him to raise his hand. Eh? His name is not visible properly. Uh, can as, you please ask uh, him as, to raise his hand? E hand. Asgar sir, please raise your hand. E hand. E hand. Okay, if he is not available, I, I will continue. I think. I think he's not there. Yeah, okay. Please continue. Yeah. So, uh, so the impact, uh, so year on year, which created, so, uh, so from 46 villages to uh, 253 villages till last year. So this year, uh, it's uh, 467 villages. So reaching out uh, uh, up to last year, around 10,000 farmers. So this year, we are going to reach about 15,000 farmers. So if we can say, especially speak about this uh, zero delay, so where, uh, the area uh, adoption by the farmers so year on year it is increasing along with the area and non burning area also is compared to harvesting so if you can see uh, the 13 percent uh, among this uh, uh, one lakh acre of harvested area so around 14,000 only uh, burning area I mean there is uh, some uh, farmers where they are having uh, heavy clay soil bills so they tried their best to get uh, on time uh, machinery available due to that uh, they are burning this uh, uh, crop residue and if you can see this plot here so this is an uh, dsr demo plot so direct seeded rice so uh, our uh, major aim is that he should do uh, um, a minim minimum disturbance of the soil and to maintain one uh, temporary or permanent soil cover and to incorporate the uh, uh, residues uh, stubble into the soil to increase the or enhances the organic carbon of that soil. So, and, uh, sir, is, is my voice is audible? It, it's okay. It's okay. There is some difficulty. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, uh, 
so to uh, to uh, so with this incorporation so uh, there may be an uh, reduction in fertilizer usage in uh, on consecutive years so if farmer can do that uh, two or three years so uh, the reduction uh, may happen in uh, fertilizer uh, usage so especially nitrogen so due to uh, 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 paddy stubble incorporation and so coming to if we can see uh, paddy stub management pattern so where uh, mulching uh, and incorporation of executive management uh, so year and year so the incorporation it is uh, uh, incorporation uh, methods uh, under this area has been enhanced year and year so 2018 to 2020 so on coming to paddy harvesting pattern so uh, so initially we saw that uh, the uh, combine harvester mounted on uh, superstar management system it chops and sp uh, evenly spread across the uh, field so but if uh, if a farmer is using without superstar management system so that lumps of uh, straw may be uh, fallen over there so he may not be able to manage it directly he he may needs to deploy uh, labor especially for the to remove that from the field otherwise he may burn it so for that one, so uh, if we can see the awareness activities which has been impacted from 2018 to the area of adoption, means in 2018 the number of villages are very less. So, but in 2020 the area is very high and the harvested area with super SMEs is also very high. Means it uh, very shows that uh, the um, conservation agriculture, so people needs to that when uh, mission uh, on time availability is there. And coming to Mr. Uh, Ali is ready. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Pavan, uh, I'll take up a uh, further uh, slide. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, my voice is audible now. Yes, yeah, yes I think yes, now, yes. Yeah, I mean, this presentation we may have to complete in another about five minutes or so. So, accordingly. Okay, fine, fine. Fine. I'll I'll do it quickly. So uh, Pavan has uh, uh, taken us through the different uh, the experience that we have got uh, in working in uh, three years and the practices and the awareness that uh, is uh, uh, being adopted by the farmers and we have uh, uh, created an awareness among the farmers to reach uh, uh, to adopt the practices the with the basic focus of reducing the uh, burning stable burning as well as with the objective of uh, increasing the yield uh, and the uh, reducing the cost of cultivation and thereby uh, enhancing the income of the uh, farmers with keeping these uh, objectives and we uh, have promoted the dsr technology in paddy and the uh, zero tillage uh, practices in uh, wheat crop I'm just sharing the uh, some of the uh, impact that uh, we have observed uh, while working on the, these aspects. The productivity in the uh, paddy has increased uh, in the DSR technology. While uh, if we compare it with the uh, the two practices we actually has promoted the DSR and the mechanized paddy transplanter uh, methodology as well. Uh, if we compare it with the control, uh, the traditional practices, the productivity has increased up, but there is not uh, major changes in the fertilizer and the uh, cost of cultivation uh, part as well, but the uh, income has increased. So uh, next slide, uh, Pavan. uh in the uh, wheat crop that uh, the observation that we got is that ki, uh, the practices has helped in the increase in the uh, yield uh, there is a uh, i think i think your bandwidth is not sufficient to efficient uh, yeah. cost related with the land preparation and the uh, weed management as well uh, with uh, these okay uh, so uh, so uh, the experience that we got in the wheat crop is that there is an in, uh, increase in the net income of the uh, of farmers by adopting the practices and as well as there is a reduction in the usage of the uh, urea uh, in the fertilizer and uh, sorry, increase in the fertilizer, urea, uh, urea uh, has increased and there is a reduction in the uh, utilization of DAP vis-a-vis uh, -vis if we compare it with the uh, uh, old practices that was followed 
सो नेक्स्ट स्लाइड पवन नेक्स्ट स्लाइड यस यस इट्स हैज बीन चेंज and we also try to map out uh, 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 with the farmers ke what is the perception uh, related with the in situ management that we uh, have scaled up and it has been adopted by the farmers though uh, the machinery availability is there uh, and with this the uh, with the adoption of the practices the soil health improvement has uh, also been there there is a uh, improvement in the so uh, the overall the practices is uh, beneficial for the farmers uh, and this we have taken uh, through the uh, to the from the farmers who has adopted the technology by doing this we have came across that uh, with the uh, uh, with the formula that we have uh, taken from the uh, gupta uh, tell uh, we have seen that there is a, a reduction in the uh, overall Uh, carbon emission as well as uh, uh, the soil health has also improved uh, upon over the year so uh, uh, we have uh, done the uh, soil testing of the farmers repeatedly uh, year on year basis and uh, we uh, have the certain changes we have observed and uh, in the kapotala we also came uh, uh, up a problem that we, there was a issue of water logging in some of the areas and because of which the uh, productivity was also hampered and the uh, crop uh, was also got uh, law uh, farmers were getting the loss also so what we have done ki we have uh, worked on the water uh, uh, harvesting structures at the different location uh, through which the Uh, water got harvested and the land has uh, uh, been used for the cultivation uh, purpose so uh, and we all uh, uh, we have uh, till now have developed 88 farm ponds and uh, have been able to create a, a 27 lakh uh, 2 lakh 70000 water storage capacity has been developed and around uh, 1300 acres of land area has been reclaimed from uh, water logging so uh, the experience that we have got uh, so far while working in this year is that ki uh, we have a total paddy area of around 183000 of which currently the uh, total harvested area is 31000 hectare and the Uh, paddy burning has also reduced extensively right now uh, it is coming up to 2.4% so uh, with this experience on year on year basis there is a uh, decrease in the uh, burning area and the adoption of the practices has also uh, gone up uh, also this has helped uh, us uh, uh, this has been uh, possible because of the uh, extension services and uh, uh day to day uh, interaction with the farmers that has happened uh, uh by adopting the around the year engagement with the farmers uh, the methodology that we have adopted because we got an experience that ki uh, if the farmers uh, if the regular engagement with the farmers has uh, is not there then the adoption of the technology uh, also gets reduced as well as the uh, the cause for which we are working uh, that cannot be met up so uh, we have designed our whole program uh, which includes the awareness capacity building of the farmers capacity building of the uh, machine owners uh, increasing the utilization of the uh, machines that is So I think this is from our website. Yeah. 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 Uh, and this is uh, the overall uh, uh, presentation uh, and the work that the ITC is uh, uh, doing right now in Kapoorthala. Uh, so thank you. thank you, thank you very much, uh, Pawan and uh, Mr. Asghar Ali. Uh, both of you have uh, have have shown a very great example of how the community mobilization is required and how. 
the community mobilization can yield the fruitful results in changing the agricultural practices so this is a very good experiment and uh, and it will uh, it will go a long way so now we will go to our next speaker that is uh, dr r n sankwa uh, the chief engineer of uh, national water development authority and uh, he he has think, he has already uh, introduced i think uh, in 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 the program something else was listed and i've been requesting uh, and i requested in the beginning also i got okay. a call schedule and okay. uh, it has already taken more time uh, so it, it may be difficult so, for me so you so, so dr jat you would like to take up uh, now I mean, as per as per as per the agenda yeah. the program what okay. you circulated that okay sorry then, then i think and uh, we, i i don't mind mean, staying but uh, as i said i have to go to another no, that's meeting. Fine yeah no no that's fine then we will uh, we will take up uh, dr jat uh, first and, uh, and and then we'll go to dr sankwa so i would uh, i would now request uh, mr ml jat to uh, take up his uh, presentation so would you like to share your screen yeah i, I will go just extempo don't have a lot of time for the presentation and don't want to repeat also what has already been said uh so thanks for this opportunity and uh, uh i work with the international maize and improvement center summit who have been working on conservation agriculture since uh, several decades and when you talk about india it's almost uh, three decades or more uh, we've been intensively working on uh, on the issue what was flagged on crop residue burning and conservation agriculture uh, when we talk about the northwestern india we are working currently in 16 districts together with other partners uh, like uh, tara trust and also the nature conservancy summit and pisa of course together with um, uh, our um, you know national systems stakeholders icar and universities and of course department of agriculture and so on in terms of conservation agriculture i think uh, <clears throat> Uh, Pawan indicated a lot of things, but I think Pawan, just uh, for uh, your information, I see, you know, somewhere, you know, there are some some challenges. Uh, you indicated rotavator plus happy cedar, which is not an obvious case. Uh, there is no need for happy cedar after rotavator once you till the soil. Uh, also, there were some issues in the data what was presented in terms of uh, yield and the the income. Uh, you know so maybe you can have a look or maybe i i misunderstood but uh, um, i think um, uh, super cedar you indicated which is not conservation agriculture it's completely tilling the soil so no way it's conservation agriculture so we should not in you know intermingle or mix things uh, so just a suggestion from my side uh, in terms of conservation agriculture i i will just summarize few things uh you know we did a meta analysis just recently and we find you lost your voice mr that no i think i think it was automatically muted uh, so i was sharing that we did a meta analysis where we find that conservation agriculture is directly or indirectly contributing to uh, almost eight sustainable development goals so from that perspective it's uh, very very important and we also see uh, you know the gains in the productivity uh, profitability and you know reductions in the environmental footprints uh, so i'm not sharing the presentation but i think there are a lot of uh, publications available but just as a summary uh, we find 15 to 12 percent of the system productivity gains with uh, 10 to 30 percent increase in the water use efficiency will almost 50 percent reductions in labor and uh, you know saving on 40 plus percent or up to 60 percent is energy and uh, the farmers profitability went up uh, by 20 to 27 percent and environmental footprints was was reduced on an average by 20 25 percent so that's uh, the the overall benefit of the conservation agriculture and when we, when i talk about these benefits these are coming from thousands uh, we we see something around 9000 pair data points from south asia over two decades so that's what i'm sharing of course uh, the response varies from the cropping systems to soil types because one size doesn't fit all 
We also did uh, how conservation agriculture helped farmers in uh, coping up with the COVID crisis, especially the labor. And that's how the direct seeded rice has emerged uh, as uh, as one of the important technologies, which is adopted by you know almost uh, 600,000 hectares by farmers of Punjab and a bit in in Haryana. There are certain new uh, you know conservation agriculture machinery came up like a smart seeder uh, recently released by Punjab Agriculture University. Uh, there are of course a lot of issues in terms of the behavior. Uh, you know, for adoption of conservation agriculture and things like that, and counterproductivity of some of the policies. But uh, what we are focusing as of now is uh, moving towards incentivizing farmers for carbon credits, and that's what is the new thing which we are we have started. Uh, we started already in four districts of Punjab, and starting in few districts of Haryana, we got entered into the agreement with Punjab government and also. Uh, with the Haryana government, we are entering into, which is already approved, and we are working with a private sector called uh, Grow Indigo, and we are trying to incentivize farmers for carbon credits. I, I think that that's going to create a pull factor so that farmers can choose what they want to use and where they want to, you know, get out of, uh, you know, these you know, all those technological options. So I think uh, the future is uh, towards incentivizes rather than the dependent on the subsidies and things like that and classical push on the technologies uh, so that's what we have started and we already are in process of enrolling farmers for uh, the carbon credits i think future uh, is towards more of towards incentivizing farmers towards the carbon trade credits and through carbon trading and and and, and through voluntary carbon marketplace and things like that which is happening you know people are you know, started talking. So I, I would suggest uh, that, uh, or I would say that, uh, you know, conservation agriculture is uh, sustainable uh, regenerative agriculture. Of course, uh, you know, it's taking time in terms of the adoption because of several issues. There are behavioral issues, there are uh, infrastructure issues, there are capacity gaps. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, and also confusion, uh, you know, uh, because different stakeholders or different players talk different languages. So I think the communication or behavioral communication are something very, very important. Um, so, but I think uh, the future is more towards uh, incentivizing farmers for the best practices they would like to use. I think we should give option to the farmer to choose, freedom to choose, you know, what they like to choose. And if they, they go for uh, those practices uh, which are sustainable, which are regenerative, which are low emission uh, i think uh, they will be uh, incentivized and benefited and those who want don't want to do that they will not be incentivized so i think that's the future so i i would uh, suggest my itc colleagues uh, to to also think from that perspective and uh, will be happy to share i mean there are a whole lot of literature publications data available on those aspects as i said in, even in the crop residue management, we are working in 16 districts of, of Punjab and Haryana intensively uh, and in a lot of villages. Uh, so, but but the issues are like, you know, last year, how the super seeder, you know, popped up and, uh, you know, all investment went there, which is counterproductive, which is, uh, if you compare, you know, I compare the super seeder and happy seeder from 16 indicators perspective, nowhere it's super. But still, there is subsidy going on. It's counterproductive for soil. Lot of energy, more you know, less field capacity. Lot more uh, you know, public uh, money for for subsidies, and lot of uh, private money of the farmers for buying uh, you know, higher power tractors and less field capacity. So I think we we have to communicate those things uh, with uh, with uh, the policymakers at appropriate uh, level, and that's what we are trying to do. And uh, we'll be happy uh, to. Uh, you know, to respond your some of any 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 quick uh, questions, queries, uh, concerns, and uh, then uh, uh, I'll escape in few minutes. Sorry, but I have to go and connect to the another call. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jat. And uh, now we will go to uh, Dr. Sankhua uh, for his presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. 
So I take your leave. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Raja. So hope I'm audible to all. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, sir. So beautiful good evening to all. So I'll be just going at temper. I think uh, you have not shared your screen, sir. Yes, sir. We so share your screen. I'll be uh, just uh, speaking at temper. Okay, that's okay. Sir. Okay, sir. With a pleasant feeling and privilege, I wish to express my thanks to the organizers and appreciation to all the participants and through you, the entire ICID for this opportunity. Approach the topic at the backdrop, I would like to focus on uh, more on IT and the space input for conservation agriculture. So before me, eminent speakers displayed their great knowledge on the conservation agriculture for farmers, those who are interested in protecting these uh, natural uh, resources while boosting yields and increasing profits. And some must be talking about the incentivization of the farmers and all that. Uh, while re uh, reversing land degradation, uh, protecting the environment, and uh, responding to growing challenges of climate change, there are a variety of conservation practices that can be voluntarily implemented to protect natural resources for surrounding ecosystems, community, and future generations. Most importantly, that once you find out the issues with this conservation agriculture, so then we can find out the solution for which we can have the benefits. Uh, which you can give the farmers. Everyone knows that it's a complex technology and involves a complete change in the agriculture system to prevent losses of arable land while regenerating degraded lands and based on the principles of minimal mechanical soil disturbances that everyone of us know that, uh, where farmers practice zero tillage farming, uh, means a direct planting without plowing or preparing soil, permanent soil cover with living or dead plant materials and power crop diversification through rotation or interrupting. So we all know that. So now when you talk of the zero tillage, uh, so zero tillage is combined with the intercropping and the crop rotation, which already have discussed, my earlier uh, knowledge speakers have discussed, which means uh, growing two or more crops at the same time on the same piece of land or growing two different crops on the same land for a sequential manner. These are also core principles of sustainable intensification. At the upfront, if I just could talk about this, the conservation agriculture and the climate smart agriculture, both are similar. Their purposes are different. Uh, conservation agriculture aims to sust uh, sustainably intensify the small holder farming systems uh, and have a positive effect on the environment using natural processes. Uh, it helps farmers to adapt, the, adapt to and increase these profits despite climate risks. Climate uh, smart agriculture, on the other hand, uh, if I can say that, that aims to adapt the uh, and mitigate the impact of climate change by sequestering uh, soil carbon and reducing greenhouse uh, gases emissions, and finally increase productivity and profitability. Conservation agriculture can be considered climate smart, uh, as we have seen in the slides uh, Mr. Brady was uh, presenting. Conservation agriculture can also use this uh, space inputs and information technology to increase the quantity and quality of agriculture products in an optimal way uh, that preserves natural resources, capital, and ecosystem functionality. So this is the crust of my uh, topic, uh, information from a range of sensor technologies. That means if you find out, uh, depending on the field size and the, that uh, field, uh, then uh, we can find out these fine sensors or coarser sensors where you can find the technologies and inputs and we can get it from there. And uh, together with uh, innovative approaches, we can have to extract the added value information which can be used for strategic decision making at farm level and for tactical guiding of on uh, in season operational activities down to the individual's plant level or farm level. If we talk of rice wheat cropping system of the present topic uh, of discussion now in South Asia and particularly in India, it is labor intensive, water intensive, capital and energy intensive also. This could be further aggravated with the deterioration of soil structure, uh, declining underground water, water quality and lesser land and water productivity, which ultimately are threat in front of sustainable and profitable uh, this, uh, systems in the region. For improving the profits and production, sustainability of these sequence, a paradigm shift is required, which we must consider. So experts recommended different uh, this, uh, resource conserving technologies, RCDs, that is zero tillage, lesser leveling, irrigation-based soil uh, mat metric potential, and uh, that is realistic uh, criterion for measuring the soil water availability to plants as it constitutes the force with which the water is held by the soil matrix. Now, generally, which is uh, measured by the tensometer, we all know. And that is direct seeding, mechanical transplanting of rice and crop derivation for these purposes. So, these sort of things can be better managed uh, with this ITs and uh, geospatial techniques. 
these technologies are site specific before selecting any particular uh, city that is a uh, resource conservation technology for a particular uh, region soil texture and the agro climatic condition must be considered a solitary approach uh, might not be effective to solve the upcoming issue and producing uh, producing more uh, crops with inadequate available water and land therefore an integration uh, integrated integrated approach is uh, required which is uh, need of the hour. and when you when you talk of this uh, issues in uh, rice food system uh, system in uh, conservation agriculture we find there are many like first one declining underground water table water uh, ground water pollution as you know that uh, per capita water availability is decreasing in the major rice growing countries in asia but in india also in 1950 it was 5.31 meter cube per head per year but now it has been reduced too much now it will be around uh, uh, 1290 to around 2050 year and all that so ground water pollution also that plays a vital role excessive use of fertilizers if you can see that and insecticides uh, pollute the underground water quality judicious use of these is a must then third thing i will talk of that diverse wide weed flora so due to the intensive cultivation of rice weed sequence the weed flora simplified with grasses and weeds compete with this main plants for light water nutrients being major biotic constraint to sustainable agriculture weeds may also cause complete grain yield losses then also outbreak of diseases and insect pests monoculture leads to build up pests and diseases we must uh, look at uh, look, look at that also one should avoid seeding and crop into its uh, own residues before these are decomposed degrading of soil structure earlier my speaker uh, my uh, brother speaker na in my uh, this uh, uh and let's speak about talk about this thing uh this rice is conventionally established through tillage under wet conditions with an aim to reducing percolation losses at the same time also easy in transplant sort of thing however its negative effects are much and through the soil degradation on on plant areas which are of great concern we must also think that declining of soil health so another uh, vital factor is that uh, this results in uh, micro nutrient deficiency in soils because of that there will be shortage of zinc there will be shortage of b12 there is shortage of calcium iron magnesium selenium copper vitamin which is uh, caused only inflammatory bowel disease which is called as ibd also that you should uh, look at that then residue management and decline of crop response that is also one of this most important vital and vital factors some of the issues of this uh, rice wheat conservation uh, agriculture among rice and wheat uh, if you have this uh, straw residues wheat residues are used for the animal husbandry sector but it has higher silica content so he is uh, is in uh, any appropriate uh, to be used in the dairy sector that also we must look into so if you talk of the geo uh, special inputs of geomatics and conservation agriculture i must tell that so giving an insight to the geomatics and conservation it can provide many things the first thing it can provide that it can give us an information on pre season risk factors for, for crop health and productivity that's the first and important thing second thing it can give us within season observations of the current conditions of crops soil and water third thing it can give us the information on the effect of treatments uh, interventions and other events such as lodging that take place during the season all of these which i just uh, discussed now can help guide uh, preventive and corrective actions for the current season as well as management decisions we can have more things regarding the fossil modeling for the pre season assessments of crop health risk factors we can have analytics for crop and water soil conditions we can have early detections we can have diagnostics we can have control of crop pest and diseases at the same time we can have in season assessment of biophysical crop parameters as quantitative information for precision farming decisions and we can take the detective of uh, detection of uh, shifts or movements in pest and disease distributions by the geospatial inputs we can have it also we can forecast of uh, farm and field level yields and map these uh, within field yields variability and we can detect the causes of yield variability within fields and farms so uh, overall we can have the impact assessments of new agricultural technologies so all these things we can uh, have through this uh, gis technologies and remote sensing technologies which we must have uh, we, we must give to the farmers so that we can have less impact on practices so earlier we got talked about impact on practices if you can give these sort of technologies to the farmers we should be uh, adopted by the farmers we should be friendly to the farmers and the friendliness of technology must for farmers also we should interact with farmers we should uh, have both the awareness of farmers so that the impact of practices will have beneficial effects and we can have emission savings and uh, with this uh, i tell that the conservation agriculture makes a good wisdom and extensive mechanized cropping systems on structurally unstable degraded lands but it smart ways or giving this uh, geospatial input 
that uh, the bridge smart ways can ground a greater good hope for shaping the sapiens and reviving the green future, which will return to its normal limits. And with this, uh, I come to the session of my brief talk. Thank you all. Thank you very much. So thank you, Dr. Sankua. And uh, uh, now we'll come to the um, uh, last sir, speaker. Mr. Akhilesh, sir, Mr. Akhilesh, yeah. also joined Mi ITC. Yeah, yeah. So I'm inviting him now. I am now inviting uh, Mr. Akhilesh Yadav, Regional Manager, North ITC Limited, uh, to share his views uh, in brief uh, for the webinar. So, Mr. Akhilesh Yadav. Yes, good evening, everyone on the panel and the participants. Sorry, if, uh, earlier I was in, there was some confusion, so I joined late, and then basically that way, this platform was was not allowed on my computer so it got delayed so maybe this uh, whatever the work in this direction itc is doing that has been already explained by pawan and asgar so uh, basically uh, the approach uh, we kept, from the start we kept it very simple uh, and premised on the conservation agriculture platform so there uh, when we initiated our, our work in punjab so there were two two major challenges which farmers were facing. Uh, the one was the regarding this uh, stubble and the other thing was that uh, uh, basically degradation of the land, uh, agricultural land. Uh, and and then it was also give, uh, giving rise to uh, other sort of problems like uh, water logging and all those because the drainage and all uh, drainage and all those were also uh, due to poor drainage in, uh, in the soil, infiltration of uh, water in the soil. So what we thought that we, if you uh, premise it on conservation agriculture or minimum tillage and returning the uh, crop residues in the land, in longer run, it will help in uh, all the wheat, it will help in all the three problems, maybe from the stubble also, that should be the major strategy. Uh, uh, anyhow, we will work on maybe whatever uh, possible to the extent that X U two, but we will focus into more in situ that because that is the a major chunk of uh, stubble which would be managed. So that would be in situ. So returning back the stubble to the soil in the longer run, it will improve the soil texture, soil uh, soil carbon, and so it will uh, improve the soil quality, which will. Uh, so reduce the reverse the degradation of the soil and in the basically the organic matter in the soil will also improve the soil texture so in longer run it will also make it more uh, permeable uh, to the rainwater so recharging the groundwater so these are the three things uh, on the scene uh, which we have uh, we have uh, thought that key conservation agriculture is the with one uh, one approach we can uh, resolve all the three these three issues and in detail uh, and it, it has been a, a participatory approach so maybe we have not uh, premised it on from pollution point of view we have uh, we have premised it on basically on soil context which uh, uh, on from farmer perspective so we have never said that you should not burn stubble because it causes pollution and uh, we we say that you should incorporate or manage your stubble so that it uh, improves your soil and productivity which has been uh, already demonstrated through our uh, works in since last three four years and as of now we have uh, basically we this year we have been scaled up to major part of the districts all the all the blocks and there has been an encouraging result last year we covered around more than one lakh acres and and it has uh, basically the stubble burning was around 13 uh, percent and with uh, much improved uh, uh, productivity and returns so that is what uh, i will have to say uh, thank you thank you all thank you mr akhilesh uh, yadav and uh, yes. you have all given a, a complete overview of the various uh, social uh, and other initiatives uh, that have been uh, that have been taken uh, and uh, i think uh, uh, it is a, it's a good experience to see that how the professionals uh, uh, can can manage the uh, 
conservation agriculture and how it can be popularized how how it can be encouraged amongst the people who are there yes. in the in the field uh, now yes. at the end actually i uh, i have i have got a request that uh, miss aya uh, from our uh, young professionals uh, group joint coordinator uh, she would like to say a few words so i would invite her to uh, take up uh, uh, take up the mic and, uh, and 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 address the gathering Ms. Aya, you can unmute yourself and start speaking. I think. Is she there? Yeah, she is there, but uh, she is uh, not connected. Uh, okay, so let us move. Hello. Yeah, Hello? yeah, we can hear you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, please. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. we can hear yeah. you. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, hello, Mr. Bandia and all uh, gorgeous uh, participants. Uh, greeting is from Egypt. Uh, I'm Ayal Khouli, civil engineer in the Egyptian Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation. Also, I'm the coordinator of the International Young Professional e Forum. Uh, today, uh, all uh, know uh, that water security is one of the important issues uh, facing all the world, which is needing to collaborate uh, to find and know the latest uh, experiences in the important issue. Uh, so, due to that, uh, ICID established the, as a young professional the e forum in. Um, 2014, and the belief uh, that young people has ideas and creativity and great energy to shape a better uh, world. Youth are full of hope and through innovation and imagination, uh, they have a great potential uh, to generate a, a positive chance in the world. Can you imagine all I said before mixed with a great experience that experts we have in ICID? I think that's great and got a chance to contact uh, many youth from different countries with various experience and knowledge. And my point of view, sharing different experiences extend our knowledge besides our problems. So I invite all youth around the world to catch that such a great chance and join us on our community and our National Young Professional e Forum. And, um, that's it and thank you so much for your time and i hope all success of international committee of irrigation uh, and drainage many thanks uh thank you aya and in fact uh, she has made a very important point uh, especially for the young professionals uh, because <clears throat> the young professionals have got a lot of knowledge at the grassroots level they are they are implementing many of the things that the the th theories and, and ways of the practices that are being recommended uh, from the higher up uh, and, and more knowledgeable people. And then how they are yes. performing on the ground. A lot of experience actually remains available with the young professionals. So uh, as ICID, uh, we would be very happy if the young professionals group uh, take up uh, such kind of webinars in a regular interval and share their actual experiences that they are having as a, as a part of their activity and maybe some of the experts uh, from the ICID uh, would also like to uh, you know join them uh, during the webinars and and and, and they discuss uh, various issues that actually came up that will help them as well in their work and and will also enhance the knowledge of uh, of the of the grassroots level issues that may be you know generating so i would request you to yes. you know propagate this amongst your linkedin group and uh, and we expect that during this year We'll be having a, a good number of webinars uh, from the young professionals, which we'll be very happy to facilitate. So, uh, okay. so thank you very much. Uh, and, and You're and welcome and many this. thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Many thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, so now uh, this uh, basically brings us uh, to the end of the webinar. Uh, 
uh, if there are any any questions or any suggestions uh, uh, from the attendees uh, we may we may take them uh, briefly and uh, we'll be happy to i mean the speakers will be happy to answer them so are there any questions madhu are there any hands no, uh, there one minute sir one minute sir yeah we got one gentleman okay yeah there is uh, there is one audience question what is the difference between happy cedar and super cedar and answer is already been given happy cedar wheat sowing on the st standing stubble of the paddy residue and then super cedar is one which cuts the stubble and incorporates it into the soil so the answer is already there and uh, now any anna, new question anna lisa anna lisa can you please uh, unmute yourself anna lisa please unmute and start speaking yeah please unmute unmute yourself Okay, sir. The, nothing, right? I think she is yeah. not attentive. Okay. Can, okay. Uh, so then, uh, then I would uh, I would request uh, Mr. Varma to take up the job of uh, word of thanks. And okay. Before that, uh, I am seeing that three hands are uh, being has been have been raised. One is uh, Mr. Heather Ali. Mr. Heather Ali, we are unmuting yourself. You can unmute yourself, and then if you have any question or any suggestion, then you can uh, speak from your mic. Uh, Mr. Hira Thakur, you can also, yeah, you can speak because you have raised the hand. Mr. Hira Thakur, you can speak now. Yeah, I think uh, uh, he's not speaking. Mr. Ronaldo, you can uh, speak because you have self muted. You can unmute yourself and then you can speak. Mr. Ronaldo. So I think uh, that they have raised the hand, but uh, they are not available. Then uh, we can uh, close this webinar. And before that, uh, I thank uh, President Raghav, who has taken time off from his busy schedule and then uh, given his uh, opening uh, the remarks and the session and then he was uh, present throughout the webinar uh, then uh, dr raghav in the end you uh, after seeing all the presentation if you like to say something we invite you for that um well thank you um mr Obama. just i would like to to thank all the speakers uh, for their uh, valuable experience and information they put into that seminar i'm sure a lot of people in the world listening to their uh, presentations will benefit really from these new um, ideas on uh, rice uh, wheat cultivation and uh, this new technology is really important because the, now we we are really talking about water saving talking about energy saving and we have now in the uk the climate change um, conference uh, was the idea really we need to minimize uh, all the greenhouse gases and uh, to reduce it as much as we can and also uh, to, to to try to save as much water uh, as, as we can and to make a good uh, and efficient use of all the resources and i think the the presentations today were uh, in that right direction 
and the direction really that uh, will help us all to uh, secure uh, food and and uh, and water for everyone. So I I, I did re really learn from these presentations myself, and that's why I stayed all the seminar because I could see something new to me personally, and I would really uh, benefit from a uh, rice in particular is really a crop that's very important for all Asian countries and it's, it is using uh, uh, maybe 40 percent of the world's uh, uh, irrigation water um, and so the irrigation worldwide uses about 70 percent of the total uh, fresh water resources but 40 percent actually go to rice so it is important crop to 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 look uh, into the management and the field management in particular so it is really quite important uh, webinar uh, for everyone and uh, i i remember i organized a workshop in 2006 uh, icid uh, meeting in kuala lumpur in malaysia and there is actually a proceedings uh, within the icid archive about the management of rice cultivation but now i feel that the 2006 knowledge that I had from my colleagues around Asia is, is now really uh, need to be updated with the knowledge and information came today. So I would like to thank you for the information that's now uh, I, I had. And uh, it, it can well be that ICID will uh, consider a workshop uh, focusing on rice cultivation because. I feel the 2006 proceedings now is really outdated uh, given your presentation today. So I would like to thank you once again for bringing this new knowledge and technologies to ICID. Thank you once more and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, President. Thank you. Uh, thank you President. And I, I think uh, we, will, uh, we will take up uh, this particular issue of, of of the paddy cultivation and its impacts on the environment in uh, in, in near future we will we'll, we'll start planning on that and uh, i will also request uh, uh, pavan kumar uh, he has been yes, a very sir. active member uh, two things one is that you should uh, also you know help uh, help uh, itc in becoming a direct member of uh, icid uh, that will that will help us because they are having a lot of uh, ground activities and 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 due to their extensive contract farming and and uh, supported farming uh, issues so those those areas will will definitely you know increase our knowledge in, in icid so itc should uh, should sure, join, uh, sure, join sure, us sure. we'll take it we'll take it up to higher levels sir. yeah yeah thank you uh, Pandeji, uh, I am seeing uh, Dr. Vava is also uh, present as uh, one of the panelists. Uh, we are unmuting himself, uh, him, and then if he wants to speak, he can also say a few words. Dr. Vava, you can unmute yourself. He is the chairman of uh, African uh, Regional Working Group. He is from Egypt. Dr. Vava. I think uh, he is not uh, available at the moment. So with Dr. this, uh, we can. Uh, Doctor Vava is not, uh, I think, uh, there. Uh, so let us uh, move forward. And I thank uh, uh, ITC. And uh, from ITC, I thank uh, Mr. Akhlesh Yadav and uh, Mr. Asghar Ali and Mr. Pawan Reddy for giving. Uh, this uh, wonderful webinar, sharing their experiences from uh, works in uh, Kapurthala, Punjab, and uh, elsewhere. And I also thank uh, Dr. Emil Jart from uh, Civit, who has shared his experience. And then uh, I thank uh, Dr. Sankua uh, from uh, National Water Development Agency for sharing his experience and then his uh, uh, views and uh, suggestions. Uh, I thank uh, uh, Mr. Pandya, Secretary General, ICID, uh, and then I, in the end, I thank all the attendees. Without them, it will not be, have been possible to have this wonderful webinar because uh, more than uh, 170 
participants are still there uh, in this webinar. So that shows that how uh, persons or uh, participants are interested in this subject or listening. So this is a, a very good number we are having at the end. And if, if even uh, after this webinar, if you have any questions or any suggestions you can share with us, we'll share with the speakers and we'll try to answer those questions. Uh, and uh, uh, then the recording of this webinar will be put up on the website in a day or two. Then uh, anybody who is who has missed this, then uh, they can see that go through this recording. And then uh, Pawan, you can also propagate uh, in your uh, circle that about the recording. If somebody is interested, they can see the recording of the webinar. So thank you very much, everybody. And with this, sure, uh, we sure. come to the close of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I want to put a thanks to ICID platform for encouraging young professionals. So thanks, uh, Professor Rajab, so far your time. And for Secretary General especially, <laughs> So and uh, engineer Chivate, so who who is anchor in uh, putting this webinar on time? So thank you very well. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.